All right, people. So this video is uh, meant to talk you through a bit about how you can structure a language analysis. Um, you've done it before, so it won't be anything new in particular, but just treat this as something um, that will help you, uh, as opposed to reinforce stuff that you already know. Um, perhaps it will give you some extra insight on how to do this. I've deliberately made it pretty fluid and not like a fill in the gaps kind of thing because one, that doesn't actually help you to learn anything. And two, because sometimes I find when something is too rigidly structured, it actually impedes your um, writing style and your expression, which I found in the past has actually made students work uh, worse than was intended. So enough about that, let's go through this. So let's never forget that the purpose of your essay is to analyze how the author intends to position his or her audience to believe his or her point of view on the issue. That's really important because sometimes we can get into a bit of a guessing game about how the audience might react. Um, but what we actually wanna do is put ourselves in the shoes of the author and try to analyze how they intend to position their audience. Okay, so no guessing games. Let's start off with the introduction. So in the introduction, you should open by briefly describing the background to the issue. Just remember that an issue is not just a broad topic, so climate change is not an issue. An issue would be something that's debated within the topic of climate change or something like euthanasia or something like um, changing gun laws or something like that. Okay, what's something contentious that can you can have multiple points of view about? You can't have multiple points of view about climate change, but you can have multiple points of view about whether it exists um, and what are the most effective ways to combat climate change. Okay, you need to include the name of the author, the form of the piece, the title of the piece in quotation marks. Uh, you need to state where it is published or presented, so what was the publication, and you should underline that. Um, you should include who the intended audience is, and that's important because obviously the author or whoever created the text created it with someone or people in mind, um, so it's important that you're able to identify that and in your essay to describe and explain how they try to position that specific audience. You're going to need to include the author's contention and also the arguments, claims, or points that the author presents. What are the different ways that they try to get their overall point of view across? Now, obviously, you're meant to put this all together in a, a flowing, fluent paragraph, so we don't just want the name of the author is blah, the form of the piece, the piece is blah, the title of the piece is blah. Try to put it together, make it sound nice, you know, like you do. Okay, body paragraphs. Now, your body paragraph should be structured according to the arguments, claims, or points that the author presents. So, if the author has three or four distinct claims, arguments, or points, then you should have three or four distinct paragraphs that, of course, are somehow related to one another. Now, your topic sentence or your opening should outline the argument, claim, or point that the author presents. So, for example, um, if we're going to relate it to what we've been looking at in class, you might say something like Walid Ali. Uh, Walid Ali's final point is that the Australian public needs to unify and love one another rather than um, cause disunity by um, speaking up against Muslims. I'm, you can tell I'm kind of just going off the top of my head, but you get what I mean, right? You need to outline the argument, claim, or point. Sorry, I should have put that in a more fluent way. Um, evidence, so use the language technique and quote where possible. So for example, if Walid Ali uses repetition, then you should say that he uses repetition and then actually give us an indication of what that looks like, right? If at some point you think, hmm, that might be a language technique, but you don't know the name of it, that's okay, just quote the evidence, because what's important is not your ability to identify the language technique, it's actually the next point, your ability to explain the intended effect of the language, 
and how the author intends to position the audience to think, feel, and believe. Remember, that is the main point of this kind of outcome, being able to put yourself in the author's shoes. Um, I've looked at lots of essays where students just identify a lot of language techniques, which is kind of like taking one step towards the finish line, but not really getting there. The finish line is the intended effect and how the audience is positioned to think, feel, or believe. So focus on that. All right, here are some sentence starters. Um, you've got those on your sheet. You can use them. If you look at these carefully and how they're ordered, um, you could also think about how... This one here is repeated. You could also think about how you might structure things so it flows nicely. So you might use meta language like furthermore, additionally, on top of this, if you think that the author use multiple, uses multiple persuasive devices and language in order to build up a certain point, you might try to show that through that kind of meta language. Okay? Um, but at the end of the day, you're always trying to get to this point uh, where you are discussing how the audience is positioned. Now, in your conclusion, you should restate the author's contention. You should restate the author's arguments, claims, or points, and summarize how the author intends to position the audience. No dramas with the conclusion. Just make it nice and simple and summarize what you've discussed in your essay. Now, in total, depending on the text that you get, you should aim for 700 to 800 words um, or 800 to 900, okay? Again, depending on how long the actual text is. I would say for the one that we've been working on in class, you should aim for something around 700 just because there isn't actually that much content or variety in there. Um, for something a bit more dense, like the French models one, I would even say you could go to a thousand because there's a lot of loaded language and a lot of things that you can discuss in that particular piece. So I hope that was helpful. Again, the point of this was not to teach you anything new in particular, but just to help you to reinforce things that you might have known or maybe remind you of things that you have forgotten.